Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into the video. Today we want to talk a little bit about the intro to networking. So we're going to talk about a couple different concepts here to really just establish a baseline. I'm going to be creating a full course and tutorial going through all the CCNA stuff, which is a Cisco network associate stuff, and all the different configurations, the protocols, etc. The first thing that you have to understand are the basics. Um, the basics between networking really are a derivative from TCP IP. So we're going to talk a little bit about what is TCP IP and what is a protocol. So first we want to talk about what's a protocol. If you look in the dictionary, a protocol is actually a system of rules. So if we're talking about a protocol in the computer or technology world, we're talking about a system of digital rules for messages and data to be exchanged. When a message is transmitted through a computer network, it's called a network protocol. TCP IP was actually developed by the Department of Defense in the 60s. Uh, TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol. You know, by 1982, it was declared the standard for all military networking. By 1985, IBM, AT&T, and DEC were the first to adopt it and actually apply it out in the real world on what we actually do and, and we use out there. So TCP IP, we want to simplify it a little bit. Every communication device uses TCP IP. So when you take your cell phone and you go to make an actual phone call to someone else, your phone is programmed to use a particular protocol to make that call transmit your voice over the air, whether it's a satellite or, or a phone line, and the other phone is programmed to actually receive that data. The same thing goes if you wanted to send a text message. Your device is now communicating with another device, and those devices have to be using the same concept, the same governing rules in order for them to talk with one another. That's basically what TCP IP is. It is a protocol suite. It is a suite of rules that are all governed by all communication devices, and it becomes a standard so that way when we develop something or we have a computer, if we're emailing something, if we want to call someone, if we want to text someone, if we want to send an email to someone, they are all using a standard form and a standard format of communication. So essentially it's how one device connects to another and transmits data between them and, and it's how the device on the receiving end knows what the device trying to communicate with it wants to do. So TCP is really an umbrella. It's an umbrella and it's a protocol suite. And then you have other protocols that exist inside that umbrella. Some of those protocols, for example, are the simple mail transmission protocol. This is used every single day. People don't even know that they're doing it. You're using this when you're sending an email. So whether or not you're actually using a web client like Outlook Express or Thunderbird, that program is using a protocol to communicate and to transmit and to send that email to its destination. It does so by communicating with an actual web server, with DNS, with an email server, and then getting it to its destination and its, its final inbox. Uh, there's another protocol called FTP, which is File Transmission Protocol. This protocol is how you can transfer files, large blocks of data, from one end device to another end device. Typically, your normal average person, uh, they, don't, they don't use these on the programming side of it. They use more simplified methods like Dropbox or Google Drive, uh, iCloud. Those are actually applications that are performing the file transmission control protocol for you. So you're not actually having to do anything on like the programming side to using FTP, but you're actually using an application that's basically doing the same thing. This is extremely popular if you're a web designer, a web developer, because if you're using something like Dreamweaver, Komodo Edit, um, Note, Notepad++, you might want to actually have an FTP configured to your, your computer and configured on the web server. So as you're working on anything, you drop in files, you drop in video, you drop in images, all of that can be transferred right to the web server. Um, the actual protocol that takes care of that is FTP. And then you have SSH, which is Secure Shell. And this is basically a mechanism for um, creating a tunnel or a connection between two devices that's encrypted. 
So again, it's just a protocol for two devices to connect to one another and to have an encrypted tunnel between them in order to protect and preserve the communication that's traveling within that tunnel so people can't see what's going on and it can't be hacked. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot more stuff that goes into that. That's really just the, the most basic overview for you. And then you have the ever most popular that everybody uses every single day, which is the hypertext transfer protocol. Now this is the protocol that is used for web development. So hypertext, HTTP, you know, that that's also the, the language for hypertext is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all those things. So hypertext is the protocol in order for you to actually jump on a web browser for the web browser to communicate with the web server for it to know where you're, you're wanting to go, pulling up the actual HTML coding and the styling and all those things. All of that uses the, the hypertext transfer protocol. All these protocols, this is a very basic outline of them. We can go into these more in depth as we, we progress into our actual into our actual courses down the road here. So you have the, the TCP IP. It ha really has two different models that are the, the standard out there. One of them is the TCP IP, the OSI model. The OSI model is very popular for networking. It's broken into seven different layers of that model and it's, it will be covered in later courses application layer, the presentation layer, the session layer, the transport, the network, the data link, and the physical layer. Don't worry, we are going to be going over these. I just want to introduce you to them now so you kind of have an understanding of a concept on the, the OSI model. On the Cisco Academy side, they've basically taken those layers and they've really consolidated them into, into four layers. You have the application layer, you have the transport layer, the internet uh, network layer, and you have the network interface layer. Again, we're going to talk about all of these, these different layers and the differences between the two models in further courses as we progress here. So just a quick recap, we kind of covered what TCP IP is. It's a transmission control protocol. It is a protocol suite. So it is the umbrella, which has all the other protocols out there, which are means for devices to communicate with one another. All devices out there use some form, some protocol within the TCP IP out there, whether it's a cell phone, whether it's a tablet, whether it's a computer, whether it's a fax machine, whether it's a telephone, all these devices, if it connects to anything, is using some form of TCP IP. We explained some of those protocols, we talked about some of those layers, so now we're going to jump into a lot of this stuff and we're going to learn about the different layers and we're going to begin to learn how to configure devices. That's how you get one device to communicate with one another. It has to be configured. Some of them are done statically, some of them are done dynamically, and again, if you don't know what that is, we're going to be jumping right into that next. So stay tuned, check out the next courses, like this video, share this video, let me know if you have any questions or if there are any other tutorial videos you guys would like.